Hi, Caroline. Thanks so much for joining us here on the podcast today. I'm so happy to have you. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I'm really interested to hear about not only your story, but the services that you offer now. Your webpage is beautiful and totally um, sucked me right in. So I must be <laughs> your ideal customer um, or client, I should say. So could you start maybe by giving us a little bit of your backstory? What led you to doing the coaching that you're doing today? Well, I've been a teacher for, I retired as a teacher uh, as of 25 years. And so I feel like I've always been a teacher. That part of me has always wanted to, I was the teacher at school who people would come to when they needed a juice recipe or they needed a go-to for, okay, I wanna start working out doing this. What do I do? What yoga do I, what kind of crystals? They would see me wearing my crystal things and then they would automatically, what is that for? And you wear all these different ones and what does this do? And so naturally like that's where I've gravitated all of these years, but when I started doing my hypnotherapy practice and we would finish with the, with the practice, with the, the session. And then my client would say to me, okay, well, now that I've uncovered X, Y, Z things, what, what do you suggest I do next? Like, what, what do I do with my life now? Now that I've kind of unblocked this, or I've uncovered that this is what my higher self is suggesting that I need to be doing how do you suggest I navigate through this? And so then I would set up another call and then it just naturally started in this, helping them along the next step in their journey. And so the name True North, um, really, I came up with that name probably like 10 years ago, not really thinking that I was, going to be doing the things that I'm doing now. And it's literally just become who I am. But it was something that I know true north is when you're finding your direction. And I think that back then when I created this name for myself, that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so I figured true north tribe is basically people who are a tribe of people who are trying to find their true north. And so that's where it came from. And um, true with no E. Yeah. Don't ask me why I said true with the I. I don't know why I chose to make it true with no E, but I did. And that's been, you know, that that's the story. And so, um, but yeah, it's all about finding you. Yeah, I um, I'm a former teacher, so I taught literature, and of course, right away I saw the metaphor in that, and I just loved the name of it. Um, And I think as teachers, we kind of gradually move into fields that are somewhat like this, because if teaching is truly a gift, it's something you want to carry on. Um, And my, the name of my business also was um, with Second Spring Naturals was my second spring, my second chance. So, you know, a different Mm -hmm. thing, but I think we tend to name things um, according to the journey that we're navigating as well. Yeah. So that had, that was my second question was um, about the name of your business and and how you um, came up with that. So with your coaching now and the work that you're doing, I should say, you have a combination of um, looking at things like yoga and crystal healing and hypnotherapy, all of those areas um, in, of mind, body, and spirit just kind of meshing together. I really love that. Can you talk about maybe each area and how you chose to kind of include those in, in your work? Sure. So I actually started out in um, yoga. Um, I have my 500 hour certification and basically the yoga was what I started off with around 10 years ago. And that kind of, as I went through the process of becoming certified and all of the things, um, you know, you begin to learn things about yourself because yoga uncovers those things, whether you want to see it or not. And through that process of the uncovering and the shedding the layers of all of the gunk that's built up over across, you know, however many years, but um, you, you begin to, I guess, pay more attention to like universal signs. And then I started getting into my crystals and I started using that for, you know, I would find that I would wear something 
and I would feel differently, or I was drawn to specific crystals or, so then I delved into that and did my certification in crystal therapy healing. And so things, it, it just kind of evolved. And then the hypnotherapy was kind of the last hypnotherapy and the breath work was like the last two pieces that I added to the tribal puzzle, if you will. And that really, um, I think it really just gave me a, a, what do you call it? Like a landmark. So if someone come, a client comes to me and they're feeling blocked or they're just feeling like they're just not themselves, they're stuck. I do a an introductory session where we're talking with the selves within you, your physical self, your intellectual, your emotional, and your higher self, your wisest spiritual self. Mm -hmm. And after we go through that, then depending on what your selves are needing from you at this time, then I say, okay, perhaps you could use, um, you know, some citrine to help empower you you could use so there's little there's so many different ways that I can infuse um, crystal healing also while someone is doing a session I can also have a crystal grid with them mm -hmm. next to me as I'm working with them and that also helps move energy as well and then especially with the yoga you know yoga there's a misconception I believe about yoga in that it only is for people who are flexible. It is only for people who can do all these crazy poses and all the things. But it's really, it's really about becoming in tune with your own, your movement, your time and space on that rectangular mat and your breath. Mm -hmm. Nothing is ever compromised. No poses, no, you should not do any poses without focusing on the breath first. And so when you're focusing on the breath and you're focusing within yourself and you're focusing on going inward, then that's going to also help you move, move things through. So when you combine all of that together, I think it helps you move through the process of your own growth and wherever it is that you're trying to get to mm -hmm. much easier and with a nice toolbox that doesn't require going to the pharmacy. Right. These are all holistic ways to help yourself find that place that you are trying to get to. Okay. That makes sense. So you call um, what you do, the wake up to life edit. I like that as well. So can you tell us what that might mean for someone who is beginning to work with you? So wake up to life edit. Yeah. Um, so when I think about, I thought about this after watching the home edit show where, yeah. you know, the ladies go in and they, you know, basically take a room or they take your whole house sometimes and they just pare down. They look at what you need. They assess and they leave you with exactly what you need. Like mm -hmm. whatever you're trying to organize, whatever try you're trying to do. So the way I look at what I do is I help someone do that for their life. So if you are trying to start a business and you have no idea, you don't even have a social media page, you don't have, you don't even have a Facebook group, you don't know, you don't even know what business you want to start. You just know that you want to do something. That's where I come in and I help creatively strategize with you what it is that you actually really want to do or maybe you're just stuck mm -hmm. which is what I was and I know how frustrating that can be and so I basically created a course which I'll be launching probably at later like later after the summer mm -hmm. um, that is kind of helping it, it's perfect for the person who is feeling stuck and that's where, um, you know, we find, I uncover a lot of the things about yoga and crystal healing. And if they choose, if, if they want to do hypnotherapy as one of their sessions, they can do that. Um, but it's basically looking at your life and figuring out 
what you just don't need anymore. Edit the things out that are not serving you. Edit the things mm-hmm. out that are dragging you down and yeah. let yourself move forward because yeah. time is ticking. It is. We don't realize how quickly it's going by. We keep yeah. saying maybe someday, someday. Um, yeah. I just picked out a quote um, I was looking at for doing my own social media and it said, someday is not a day of the week. No. And I like that. So yeah. what types of clients are, do you typically work with? I know you work with business owners. Um, what other women might come to you? Um, for direction? Burned out moms. Um, and, and just women in general who just feel like, you know, maybe they want a career change. Maybe they've, they've been in a career and they hate going to that job and they've always wanted to open up their own florist or their own whatever. You know, there's so, it's almost like, sometimes I feel like when we just give someone permission to do something, they're like, oh, okay, so I can do this. Mm -hmm. And it's giving someone that, that courage to just believe in themselves. And if we don't, if we don't take ownership and, and, and self-worth in thinking that we are worthy enough to do whatever it is that we want to do. You want to go sell rocks. I don't know, but whatever it is, you, you got to do the thing mm-hmm. because if you don't, you're going to wake up every morning saying to yourself, I wish I was doing this. Why am yeah. I not doing this? I don't like my job. I don't want to be there. It's soul sucking. It's draining. And if that's the, I think that's the, the one thing that I wish I would have done is maybe leave teaching a little bit sooner than I did, but I held out and I held out and I held out. Why did I hold out? Because I didn't have faith in myself. Mm -hmm. We Um, use these excuses like it's, and you know, some of them are somewhat valid, but security, you know, mm -hmm. benefits, security. I can't leave for that reason. I think that's, you know, the biggest, I was just away for four days. We took my son is um, finishing eighth grade. So all of the moms that have kind of formed a a mama tribe over these eight years that these like 12 kids have been friends. Wow. Uh, We took them all away to a lake house. So we spent, you know, obviously a lot of time reflecting and talking. And, and one of my friends said, she's a speech pathologist. And I said, well, what do you think about your job? You were, you know, during the pandemic, she had to go online and work very differently than what she does now. And she said, I I don't like where I am. And she said, I go through this endless cycle of searching for something else to do. And then remembering why I can't leave because they pay me so much here. I'm not going to find that here. I'd have to give up the three days that I work to work full time to make this. Um, But just listening to that really kind of made an impact. And I, I just, I know that there are 95% of women out there just feeling stuck. Like it's mm-hmm. just not an option and they're vocalizing that. Right. And that's where, that's where I think when you, when it, when it comes down to you wanting to really do something and make that shift, you have to, first of all, take on a new mindset mm-hmm. of stop thinking in lack and stop thinking of it's going to take me, I'm never going to be able to make this salary. You know what? You might make four times that salary. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the courage and you don't have the willingness to take that leap and change the mindset and really embody it, Mm -hmm. you're definitely not going to make it. So you have to pick and choose. You've got to pick like what it is you really want to do. Like 20 years from now, and you're sitting at that lake house. What, I mean, what's going to happen? Are you, I mean, hopefully she's going to say that she ended up leaving. I hope, but you know, so many people get stuck in these places that they don't want to be. And it really ends up shortening their life because it's more stress. It, they wake up not happy every day mm-hmm. and it just, you, I mean, it, it continues. Mm-hmm. So I want to help motivate, not motivate, but make an impact and, and really encourage women to go after that thing that they keep saying they're going to do not just for themselves, but you know, if you have children, you also want your children to see that you have this fire within you that you're not willing to settle. Mm -hmm. 
because settling, pardon my French, but settling just sucks. It, it's, it continues to suck the life out of you because you know that you have settled. Yeah. <clears throat> Somebody else walking and seeing me in Target is not going to know that I've settled my life, mm-hmm. but I know. Yeah. I always say that my boys, um, I'm, I'm still shocked that I, I get this, I see this glow in them just watching me doing what I'm doing now. And this, just this interest that they have. And I always say, well, what about all those years I was teaching in the university or doing all of this work and, and that work that made me think I was doing important work. I was important. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and now I'm, I feel like this is very much work. I'm very busy, but I am having a blast every day. And how can that not rub off? Right. Yeah. And I think that's what we need to, that's what we need to impart from the lessons and and things that we do in our lives that we find success in. Mm -hmm. And if we can just teach people to take that nudge and to follow their, their truth. Um, And you know what, sometimes you might follow, you, you might've gone into soap making and you were like, you know what? this is really not what I set out. This is really not what I thought it was going to be, but you know, what's going to happen is that whatever was supposed to be, it's going to bring you one step closer to whatever that was. 100%. Like now doing this podcast and finally writing the book that I want to write, but a different kind of book, right? Right. Right. But you have to always take those little steps Mm -hmm. and listen to those universal, you know, watch for the signs, listen for the signs, look for the things that you're called to do, because each one of those is a place in your journey. And another thing is that I've learned, it's not just about the summit. You have to partic- you have to appreciate every inch of the climb. Yep. Because the climb for one is what's getting you to the summit, but that's also going to help you summit another mountain. All the tips and tricks that you learn climbing that mountain the first time are going to help you on the second one. So you got to remember your journey. Don't Mm -hmm. just be fixated at the top. Pay attention to the little things that you're doing that are moving you up the mountain. Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to ask you about your maps method of coaching. So all of these things, um, you know, there's got to be some kind of a method to, to help get there, right? To, to take right. those steps. Could you describe what your, what that is? Okay. So MAPS stands for mindset, alignment, purpose, and staying the course. So without anything, you know, if your mindset is not really robust, like I, I use weight loss as an example, you can you can say that you're going to go to the gym and you get there and you're just like, yeah, this is great, but um, I'm not, you know, do I have to do this every day? Like, do I have to come here three times a day or whatever? And the mindset is not, it's not in the game. Like your mindset has to really, really, you've got to be invested in what you're doing because if you're not a hundred percent invested in what you're doing, and it's not your authentic in alignment with you, it, it's just not, you're going to struggle. You're going mm-hmm. to really struggle with it. So in mindset, make sure that you are like, really, this is exactly what you want. It's not something that uncle, you know, Bob wants you to do. It's got to be something that you want for yourself. Yes. So figuring that out, And understanding it's more than just saying, okay, I'm great today. No, what does great feel like? Mm -hmm. How do you embody great within you? What is, what is the great you do every day? That's all part of mindset. And then the alignment, A for alignment is, are the things that you are doing on a day-to-day basis in alignment with where you are trying to go? Yeah. Because if you're telling me that you want to be in, you want to run a marathon and I've given you the whole schedule of what you need to be doing on a daily basis and you don't even want to walk a mile a day, that's really not in alignment with the goal that you have. So it's always reflecting back and looking at the alignment of 
where it is you are trying to go and are the things that you are doing in alignment with that goal. Yeah, for sure. It's like, it, I always think of it as making decisions. So when you're asking yourself this question, is this, um, I think of it as uh, fulfilling my purpose, right? Mm -hmm. Is this going to fulfill my purpose? If it's not, even if it sounds great or it sounds fun, then it needs to kind of go over here. Right. We're not going to do right. that thing right now. Yeah. Right. And then purpose is basically kind of looking at where it is that you are plant that you have set out to go and do whatever it is, the plan that you have, whatever your venture is, and really making your days purposeful in getting to that thing. Just like you said, if, if I want to, if, if you're making a soap and now you're like, you know what, I think I want to sell yoga mats. It might be great. It might be a brilliant idea, but you need to, you need to table that for another time. Like mm -hmm. our purpose is we're making soap. Mm -hmm. Don't let all of the other little things, all these wonderful, magical ideas that you have over here, stick to the thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Stick to it. And don't, don't waver because what happens is, is then you start, okay, I'm going to make a yoga mat over here. And then I want to make, let's do a course over here. And then over here, we're going to do, and then you, before you know it, like, your purpose is now very diluted. Mm -hmm. um, and then S is staying the course. So that I think is the hardest. That's probably besides the tackling the mindset, staying the course is probably the hardest. And why? Because a lot of times things get worse before they get better. Mm -hmm. And when someone has not been through that transition of their life where they're they're seeing like slow changes and it's not happening fast enough. They think that they're doing it all wrong or they're being, they're very frustrated and they don't understand like their body is telling them one thing, but then their brain is telling them this and it's very confusing and it's hard. It's not all rainbows and butterflies. And I think staying the course is, takes obviously dedication but if, if you don't have someone a lot of the times walking with you, I don't have to hold your hand, but I walking with you and reminding you of why you're on this journey and the things that you put on paper that you said you wanted to do. Sometimes we need that. We need that encouragement. We need that, that camaraderie to, to help get you to those different levels. And it's, um, it's just what I found, you know, when I came up with that, I wanted it to be something that would be easy for someone to remember and say to themselves as they're planning out their week, okay, what are my maps? Mm -hmm. Okay. What am I doing for mindset? What, how am I keeping myself in alignment? What is my purpose this week? That's moving me towards my goal. And how am I going to stay on track? Mm -hmm. And of course it goes with your overall kind of brand of, of true North and it's all about navigation. Mm -hmm. Right. So I like that. Right. So a question that I ask everyone is kind of a two-pronged question. What has been your greatest challenge so far in transitioning from teacher to, to coach, what you're doing now? And then on the flip side of that, what has been your greatest joy? The hardest thing I think for me was taking the plunge to do the thing that I said that I wanted to do all these years and not doubt myself mm -hmm. and understand, like I touched on it a little bit before, but if we don't invest in ourselves, then how are other people going to invest in us? Yeah. And that is a huge lesson that I have learned um, in this entrepreneurial space. And just knowing that I'm worth it. If, if no one else thinks that this program is worth it, I'm worth it enough for me to give it a try and to put something behind it. Because if it's coming from the heart and it's something that I've thought of, then it has to hold some value. Mm -hmm. And then it's just building on that. And <clears throat> again, it's not always an easy thing to, to really swallow every day, but the more you do it, the better you get at believing in yourself. 
Mm -hmm. And really, at the end of the day, there's, it's going to sound really like cliche, but there's really not anything that you can't do. It's true. If you set your mind to do something and you do your work, I mean, how can it fail? And if it does fail, failure is not a bad thing. It's a growth tool. Mm -hmm. So it may not, you may not grow super duper fast, but if, if you had to fall back to move forward, then it's worth it. That's how we learn. Yeah. It's and almost like that weight loss. That if you think about it, it never goes down like this. It always goes like up, down, up, you know, but there's right. always that, that gradual decline. Mm-hmm. So we can look at it that way too. Yeah. 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 And so I think that encouraging and just setting that message of I'm worth it and know the journey is not going to be easy but you know what? It's what I want. Mm -hmm. And that's the worthiness in it is it's because it's coming from me and that, you know, creating worth worthiness in a human is holds a lot of value. And I don't mean, yes, from a monetary perspective. Yes. But you can't put a price on your own worthiness. Mm -hmm. And so teaching people that is, you know, you're, you're talking about looking at people's patterns and looking how, at, you know, how they grew up and what people have told them their whole life. And, you know, some of this stuff is so deep seated yeah. and it comes up in hypnotherapy all the time. That's like one of the biggest things that comes up is that women feel that they are not worthy of doing said thing over here. Hmm. So, um, and my thing about what I am happy, would you say happy or joy, joy about joyful about what has given you the greatest joy? Yeah. Oh, giving me the greatest joy, finally doing my own thing and showing my kids, just like you said, you know, they see how much this lights me up and they see that I am so much, I am so much more fulfilled in what I'm doing. And don't get me wrong. I loved teaching and I loved working with kids and all mm-hmm. the things, but this is just a different, this is for me now. Yeah. This is for me and this is to help other people. And if, and that's, and I, and I love, just like I loved seeing the light bulb go off in, you know, in my fifth graders eyeballs or my middle schoolers eyeballs, I love seeing a light bulb go off in a woman that they're like, Oh, now I get it. Mm-hmm. Now I see. Yeah. Amazing. So I wanted to ask you, um, I love books as you can see behind me. So I always want to get a, rep- a recommendation, any books that you would recommend for maybe who a woman who is like right on the verge of, of thinking about this, this major shift in her life or just wanting to explore that thing that she's always wanted to do. Well, it's funny. I, I pulled three books. Um, when I was starting out with True North, Mm -hmm. um, this book here was one of my absolute favorites. It's called Daily Love by Mastin Kip. Um, As you can see, like, I don't know, you you can see my, literally like dog-eared. And there's actually a little, can I just read you something quickly? Yes, please. Okay. Um, Where is it? It is. It's the invocation and it is. um, Oh, here we go. Okay. I love this quote and hopefully I won't cry when I read it, but it's, it's, it's really good. So a day will come when you will be stirred by unexpected events. A part of you will die and you will begin to search for the elixir to bring this part of you back to life. You will seek this elixir in friends, lovers, enemies, books, religions, foreign countries, heroes, songs, rituals, and jobs. But no matter where you look, the treasure will evade you. 
all will seem lost. You will lose all hope that this magic potion even exists. It will be the darkest of nights and the promise of certain death will lead you to the abyss of despair. But staring into this abyss, you will begin to see the I see, I You will begin to see the dim light of your own illuminated soul. Hmm. Your radiance will transform the abyss itself into the elusive elixir of life. And for the first time, you will realize that all the while, it was your own light that you were searching for. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That one's definitely every time, frameable. Every time, every time I read that, I... Um, yeah, it gets me, but yeah. just, I love like super can't recommend this enough. Okay. Um, and then Gabby's the universe oh, yeah. has your back. Yeah. And this one I actually just got, and I love this book. Ooh, I love it. That one. Love it. Love it. It, and it is beautiful. Um, she has messages in here that are just I think perf like I was re as I was reading, I'm like, I don't know, a quarter of the way through. I said to myself, I wish I would have had this book back, you know, six, seven years ago. Because I would have maybe I would have understood, you know, like it says here, slow growth equals strong roots. Mm -hmm. And Oftentimes we we're so in a hurry to to get to that goal that we want, like that whatever it is that we're trying to do, and we don't understand why it's taking so long. Like we feel like we're just, oh my gosh, this is ever gonna just like come true. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's teaching people that that little thing that you do today is just as monumental as what's gonna come to fruition on the day that you think it all comes together. You know, it's like when the, mm -hmm. when the actress walks and receives her Oscar from the red carpet and all of that to all of that for that moment of like, however many seconds they give them for their acceptance speech. But think about all the little decisions that had to be made throughout their lifetime and people they had to come in contact with to finally hold that Oscar in mm -hmm. their hands. And it wasn't fast. Like nobody gets an Oscar overnight. At least I've never seen that. Um, and it's reminding people that that's really the way it works. Yeah. It's, it's a slow growth, but when you think about it, you know, you've got to be able to weather a lot of things and you want mm -hmm. deep roots and you want, you want a strong foundation so that it doesn't shake you and it doesn't break you and it doesn't, you know, you're, you're going to have maybe periods of drought. Maybe you're going to have, you know, whatever we could put all kinds of metaphors here, but mm -hmm. it's just, it's all about the journey. And again, yeah. going back yeah. to true North. Yeah, it's true. Um, you know, that's why not everybody gets the Oscar, right? That's mm -hmm. why not everyone has all of these achievements. It's those who are able to keep weathering storms. Mm -hmm. and continue going um on the path well this and not give been, up yeah and not give up yeah so this has been great I've, I've learned a lot from this conversation I've got some really nice book recommendations of course for my own audience and the last question is where can we find you online oh okay so you can find me at the true north tribe.com um which of course true with no e and then um, I do have a podcast, Tried and True with Caroline. And I think that's it. You can pretty much, oh, and True North Tribe is my Instagram. So the same true with no E, True mm -hmm. North Tribe, that's it. And, um, and then on the Instagram at the top, there's my links page that people can go and look at different, you know, different, all the different things. And, but you can also go to the website and see everything for the most part, um, there too. Yeah. Perfect. 
Well, thank you for being here and sharing your journey and talking to us all about your programs. I enjoyed talking to you and I hope to connect with you again soon, Caroline. Yes. Thank you so much for having me, Carrie. You are quite welcome.